Hey, potential backers. Warden here. I wanted to talk to you guys and let you know the five things you need to know about running the optional system, which is the mechanics that are behind Killshot. What we're going to do today is just give you a very basic example of how the game works at its core and why it so perfectly emulates action movies, investigation, and everything that's needed to make a game like Killshot Reloaded work. And then after that, we're going to do a quick little demo of it so that you can see a series in action and just get an understanding of the awesomeness of Killshot Reloaded. Step 1. Options. All the characters perform options in order to pull off their actions. An option can be any individual movement because Killshot and the optional system keep track of things to the minute detail. You're not just going to be making one dice roll, you're going to be making a series of dice rolls on your turns. And every time you go to roll dice or perform something automatically, you're going to be using an option to get it done. There are five base options that every character is capable of doing. Active, ready, move, quick, and free. There are many other options that your character is going to be able to learn as you increase in training. Whether or not they help you specialize in a focus, allow you to heal teammates, or simply allow you to cheat the system. But when it comes down to it, every time you perform an action, you're using one of your options. Step two is dice. Everything that you're going to be doing in the game is going to involve a dice pool. You're going to be building up your pool based on various attributes, and each attribute is assigned a different die type. The d20 is your base die. Everything that you do is going to use at least one d20. That's basically your random chance of things going your way or things completely imploding. One key thing to notice is that whenever you roll a 20 on your base die, you gain a training point to uh, gain additional experience. So obviously the more often you roll dice, the greater chance you have to increase your experience. D12s are your focus dice. That will represent your generalized training. For Kill Shot Reloaded, every assassin has their own individual focus, whether or not you're an enforcer, you're a hunter, or you're a burglar. That's where you start using your focus dice. D10s are used for circumstance dice, and in those cases they represent outside influences, so uh, bonuses that you get from gear, outside influences such as modifiers, things that are normally beyond your control, but you can try and use to your advantage. D8s are your option dice. So depending on which option you've declared, you might be able to throw on a couple of D8s to go in addition to it to once again increase your chances. As time goes on and you increase your training, you can actually increase the number of option dice you use on the particular option you spent training points on. Your D6s, those are your trained dice. Those are for skills, moves, maneuvers, anything that you've learned as a one-shot token because as soon as you use a D6 from a skill, it's gone until the next scene. So it's resource management at its best. And finally, the D4s are known as bonus dice. Depending on the type of character that you're playing, you're going to have a chance to gain bonus dice that you can use at any other point within the current job. When that happens, you can add it to your roll before you drop your dice, or even afterwards in case you're shy by a couple of points. Because the main thing to remember when you're using dice is that all of these explode. When you roll the maximum number, on any kind of die type, you roll them again. Step three are hits. Hits are what's going to measure how awesome your character is or how lousy you are for trying. Whenever you make a dice roll, it's opposed by another character or by the director. Everyone then takes the results. Whoever has the highest is successful. Whoever doesn't, fails. You each then take turns to divide your results by 10, and that's going to determine the number of hits that you succeeded or failed by. From there, you simply turn to the hit chart that's on your character record, and it tells you just how awesome you truly are. Step four are teams. And to learn about teams, we're going to have to discover the tracker. Now, this particular little item is the exclusive tracker edition that's made on whiteboard, that you'll get if you actually back Killshot Reloaded for $100 or more. But there's also pen and paper editions that you can either print out with your PDF or photocopy with your softcover edition. What we do with the tracker is we break everyone down according to teams. So everyone's broken into assassins, marks, or thugs. And each of them can be broken into individual teams. 
So in team A could actually be your assassins, team B could be the marks, and team C could be any thugs such as bodyguards who are protecting the marks. The teams are then assigned how many actions they have on their turn based on their character type. And we're going to use white poker chips on the tracker to measure those. Once we have everything else that's in place, we're going to start moving on to step five, which is the edge. This little red bar right across the top is going to determine who actually can make active rules and use options and who has to simply sit there and defend themselves. When that happens, you simply use a red poker chip to keep track of which team has the edge. The edge then can pass easily back and forth and teams can actually steal it. So let's say, for example, that Team A, the Assassins, has actually set a trigger. They're standing outside the door, they're waiting for their mark to show up. As soon as the door opens, their trigger goes off, and they steal the edge, and they can open fire. And those are the five things you need to know about Killshot Reloaded and the optional system. But I tell you what, sometimes you need to see something in action. So joining me to help out is Mick Dumay, member of the development team, and our camera operator, who's going to join me in playing a quick little series from our last edition of Killshot the Director's Cut. Hey, Doug. Hey, boy. How's it going? Good, good, as always. All right, so you know exactly how all this works. So what we're going to do is we're going to replay the scene that we did from last year, where it's going to be the shootout at the lake. It's going to be you against the Blade Gangsters and the Russians who are trying guys. to pin you down. Yeah, exactly. I hate those guys. We're going to do it for one quick little series so that everybody at home can see. Okay, so here's the scene as it's set up. You're inside your client's cabin. Your client is already dead inside of his office, killed earlier by the people you believe to be outside. Oh. Coming up the front steps, you can make out about three or four of these gangbangers who were earlier shooting up the place. You also know that there is a sniper on a lone fishing boat somewhere out in the water. So what we're going to do to start this off is we're going to actually do initiative which is going to be based on sense because right now you're actually ducked down, you're kind of, you know, hiding, trying to avoid being picked up by the sniper. So you have to use your ears to pay attention to who's coming up first. So, uh, what do you have for your sense dice? How many do you have? I have two die 12. You have two die 12, okay. Uh, the Blade Gangsters actually only have, they have no uh, sense dice whatsoever. So you are automatically going to start off with the edge. Sweet. What do you want to do first? You are actually crouched down. You're right beside a large picture window. You're uh, trying to avoid being picked off by the sniper. You can start to make out the sound of footsteps that are coming up towards the front door of the house. So they're up on the porch then? They are up on the porch, yes. Out, out of this window, if I smash it and look around the corner, can I see the front door? Or at least the people standing in front of it? Uh, you would have to step well into a view of the picture window. If you do that this trigger could go off. All right, so the sniper has me pinned down pretty well. That's right. However, not too far from there is a doorway that leads to the front hallway of the house. You could step there and be able to engage the thugs that are coming in. Sure, uh, I'd like to yeah, do exactly that. And okay. I would like to ready an action, or uh, a trigger per se, to uh, shoot as soon as the door opens. It doesn't matter who's on the other side. Okay, so you're gonna ready to shoot when the door opens? Yes. All right, done. That's going to use your first. So it, now the edge passes. It. Now the edge passes. So the first thing that's going to happen is the blades are going to show up at the door. However, I'm going to have to make a sense roll to see if they notice you at first. So that's, uh, yep, we're going to do sense rolls on this. So it's going to be the d20, your base dice, plus whatever you have for sense. By 2 by 12. Uh, okay, and I have nothing. And then if there are any other skills or anything else you want to give, um, I'm going to give you the cover modifier, so give yourself plus 2d10 on there as well. Can I borrow one of your die 10s? Yes, you can. There we go. And all I have for these thugs, uh, for these gangbangers, is just the d20. That's it. So let's go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> to two. I rolled a two versus your umpteen bazillion. Yeah, I got about 27 here. 27. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's actually going to be... Uh, I'm going to fail... Uh, by two hits. So what's going to happen when we turn under our little hit chart here? Well, if you had taken any damage, you'd be able to recover that. But basically, that roll has completely failed. As soon as they start coming up, all of a sudden you hear one of their cell phones. As soon as that happens, I want to unload my shotgun. <laughs> Done. In that case, then, your trigger goes off. 
All right. Fire away, so good I'll, sir. I'll be firing with my sense, of course, because uh, I, I will have heard that. Mm -hmm. and I will know that somebody's behind that door. Okay. So I'll be using my die 20, my die 12s, because of my sense. And I'm going to use, well, let's let's be a little bit naughty here and throw away uh, one of my firearms, die, uh, skill dice right, right away. Alrighty then. And because they're actually behind a wooden door, it's still flimsy, but I'm going to give them two die 10 for cover. So this is going to be shooting at the first gang here. 20, 28. 32 total. 32. You rolled a 6 on a 6, so that explodes. Explodes. I will take a 37. 37, and I got 18. So that means uh, two hits. you succeeded by two hits. The first guy's dead. So shotgun blast, you said? Yes. Blows a hole right through the middle of the door. And, and you, it's like a huge one. Like, just a huge, massive yeah. one. And you can see the figure who once stood there boom, fall backwards and actually slide off of the deck and hit the ground below. Uh, because you've succeeded, you get a bonus option. Keep going. Um, can I see somebody else through the door? Or the hole that I just made? Can I see somebody, you know, white-eyed, scared for, you know, not getting shot in the face with another gun? Yeah, you can see actually that there were two other ones who were standing like almost right beside him. Well, I'd like to unload on that guy as well. Okay, using your sense for the attack as yeah, well? Yeah, sense okay. as well, but I'm not going to use my remaining uh, fire uh, firearms dice. Okay, I'll cool. save that for later because i got to get that sniper out of the way somehow. Yes, exactly. Okay, let's do it. Look at these rolls today. Oh, these guys are so pathetic. 23. I will take a 30 flat. 30, and I got a 14. So once again, you succeed with another two hits. Another shotgun blast. And now what happens is actually is that the door just blasts almost right open. The bottom half just falls out completely. And so it almost looks like a really haphazard, really sloppily done, like Wild West door. So there's just the top half that's just kind of hanging there. So they only, I'm going to take their cover and I'm going to actually eliminate it completely. Right. Um, that's another successful roll. You have a bonus option. Now, I, I can see that these guys came in with, at a car beforehand, right? I'm mm -hmm. guessing they came up to the cabin like that. Now, I'd like to try and make a stunt option, if, okay. that's, if that's at all possible. Two actions at once. I'd like to run out, I'd like to shoot, and I'd like to roll behind the cover of the car, hopefully before the sniper can take a shot at me. <laughs> Uh, the big trick with that is you're going to have to leap out of a window to do that. If, if, that's, if that's the plan, I'm going full, full, oh, full on that. Alrighty then, so that's going to be a stunt. That is going to increase your difficulty by 2 die 10 right there. I've got to get out of this situation somehow, Todd. And, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to also add on another d10 because the fortified modifier for the window. Okay. The windows are not always that easy to break through. All right. Uh, so for that, you're also it's going to have to be body because you're trying to do a physical stunt. All right. So that just decreased my odds considerably. Okay. I will now add a firearms dice because now this is go time. This All is right. Shoot or be shot. Okay. There we go. Uh, so I'm rolling with three dice. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I can add on here. Uh, tracking. Uh, don't know about that. Brawling. Unarmed. No, I'm not unarmed. Pistol. Uh, no, I'm fine. Three okay. dice it is. All right. Done. Let's roll this. Fourteen. Uh, Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Difficulty is nineteen. You're just barely able to make it. So I, I, do I jump out the window? You jump through the window. All right. And you land down and roll into the ground. You're now uh, like using their car for cover. Okay. And you've caught them completely off guard. You now have a clear, perfect view of these two up on top of the balcony. Okay. Because you attempted a stunt, you gain a boost. Right. So that means you can now apply an extra, uh, an extra D20 uh, to all of your body rolls for the remainder of this series. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I, that was successful, right? So I still get to keep going. Yes. Yes, you can. Hmm. Okay. So I can still see the guy, uh, one, the one uh, blade that's still left outside. There's two of them there's actually of still them. out there, yes. Okay, so there's still stu two people out there, including the sniper who's trying to train train a sight. Yes, on. and the reason why his trigger didn't go off is because he was aimed squarely at that picture window in the living room that you've completely circumvented. All right. So you have actually eliminated his trigger. You right. can't use that anymore. So he's a little bit off guard here. So exactly. I'm, I'm going to try and use this to my advantage. Um, I want to try and put the house and the sniper in between me. Just in case he wants to, you know, try. With this case, just the car alone. Actually, you've got some really good coverage. Okay. So I mean, like, and considering that he's in a rowboat, he would have to paddle himself into position. All right. So you're pretty good right now. Uh, so 
I'd like to take a shot at one of the two two remaining gangers then. All right, good enough. Um, what are you using? Uh, body or sense for the attack? I'm using sense now. You're using sense. Okay. Yep. They still have no dice for that. However, they are at the top of the stairs. I'm going to give them uh, the higher ground modifier, which is a D10. But that's it. Let's roll it. Oh, ouch! I'll take a uh, oh. twelve. Oh, you rolled a one on your base dice. If we were playing a full game, that would actually cost you an evidence point. So right now, basically, what I would have said is that you actually left a handprint on the hood of this car. All right. Uh, but for now, so what did you get? I got a total of 12. You got 12? I got a 10, so you got lucky with that one. Oh. However, you succeed with zero hits. You go to fire off the first shot, and it actually hits more of the house than it does uh, the actual gangbanger. Okay. However, they stumble back a little bit, and that does open it up for you to take one more shot. Okay, well, I'm going to use this in a, 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 a time to quickly, as they're reeled back, run forward, because I am trained with brawling as well. Okay. I'd like to run forward and kind of grab one of the gangers' guns. The only way that you'd be able to run forward and grab them is by doing it as a stunt. You can only do a stunt once per series. Okay. So the only way that you could do that is by moving up, and as soon as you hit the top of the stairs, then your turn's going to be done. All right. Well, then that that, that that will leave me out in the open, and I'll get perforated by probably three shots. Exactly. Uh, so instead, I'll just, uh, well, I'll cock my shotgun again, and I'll, uh, I want to try and actually hit one of them. Okay. This, time. <laughs> this is also going to be the last shot you'll have with this shotgun before you have to reload. Okay. Okay. So, pretty much the same thing as before then, dice-wise? Yes. Two, right. two incense and one die twenty. Oh, director's rolling so crappy today. I don't know. I've got an 11 here, Tom. You got an 11? I got six. Okay. So, so once nice. again, same thing. Except now what these guys are doing is they're actually ducking down towards the ground so that they're trying to use as much of this porch as possible for cover. Uh, and now your shotgun is empty. So what are you going to do? In okay. order to reload it, you'd have to use a quick option. That would end your turn. Or you can simply drop it and pull out another weapon that you have at the ready. i got to reload. My pistol's not going to be enough here. Okay, so you're going to duck down and you're going to reload. Yep. When Wait. that happens, that becomes the last option you can use on this turn. So now that I'm out of actions, what happens for the rest of the series? All you can do right now while you're reloading your shotgun is basically try and avoid being shot. Okay. That's all, right. all you can do right now. So the edge passes over to the blades. These last two guys, they're going to take shots at you. Once again, they've got higher ground. They are definitely going to use it. They are going to attack with body because they have 1d12 in their body. So I'm going to have to roll with my body then. Yes, you have to roll with your body. Yes. And you know what? Just because they're really nasty that you killed their buddies, they're going to throw on one of their firearm skill dice. All right. Let's do it. You have plus 2d10 from cover of the that car. That is true. So I do get to roll another d20. Do you mind, mind if I use this large one? Yeah, go for it. It looks glamorous. Oh. oh. And don't forget your 2d10. Yes. You can use those two. There's cover from the car. And 12, 24, 39, 41, uh, 47 total. 47, and I got 19, 22, 26. Oh, I failed by two points. So, because that's a fail roll, that cost them their turn, and that's it. Oh, no, but it's not enough. Sorry, that's my bad, because that's not enough for you to steal the edge or anything back. There's still the one guy left. Okay. He's going to go and take a shot and give him the same dice. He's going to use up another one of his king's firearms. So I, I get to use the same dice that I just rolled? No, you have to re-roll again, because it's right. a totally different attack. Okay. Oh, there's lots of explosions this time. Oh, I got a 20, though. I got a 20. Oh, that's going to be a training point for you. And I could then put that training point to, I don't know, get another firearms dice at the end of the session. You could actually cash it in to gain an extra bonus dice whenever you need it. Okay. So if you need it in an emergency, you can do that. Wow. I'm at 42. Oof, 34. I'm at 50. <laughs> 50? Oh my god, I got 29 for mine. That is definitely going to cause to steal the edge. All right. Now they are definitely done. But because you don't have an edge, it's automatically going to pass down to the sniper, who's the only one left in this current series. Oh man. 
and he is definitely going to take a shot. Now, he is actually a fully trained sniper. He is a mark. So, this is going to be against body because he has 2 die 12. And actually, I'm going to go... I'm going to nail you with this one. Oh, man. Oh, yes. Let's start bringing out the dice. I just, killed, right. I just killed a whole bunch of gangers. Why does he mad at me? Hey, this is what a professional sniper does. Let's see here. I need another D12. There we go. So that's just for his body. Wow. This other one. If I can find another one. Die 12? Oh, I got one right here. That's for his sniper. Um, but you are also going to get the 2 die 10 for cover. And... Yep, that's everything he's going to need. Oh, well, this will be a close one. Especially if I roll horribly like that. <laughs> Alright, the attack is 20. I did get over 20. I got uh, 38. 38? Alright, that one misses completely and it pings right off. And with that, his action is now done. And that's the end of the first series. Well, I'm in a predicament, that's for sure. Yeah, you're now pinned down behind a car. You've still got two gangbangers that are up on the porch. Uh, they kind of have you pinned down, but you'll now have a fully reloaded shotgun. You can start shooting again. All right. Cool. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you play Kill Shot Reloaded.